Delphi Prism is Embarcadero's Delphi product for building .NET applications. It's powered by the REM Objects Oxygen compiler and is most typically used for building .NET applications, but it's not restricted to that. It can also build applications that run on the Mono platform. Mono is very similar to Microsoft's .NET platform, however, uh, unlike .NET, it's not limited to just running on the Windows platform. It can also run on Linux and on Mac OS X. It implements the same underlying runtime standard that .NET implements and implements the same base library set that .NET implements. However, it does enable us to take our .NET skills and build cross-platform applications. In these videos, we're going to see how Delphi Prism enables cross-platform development by building a few applications and seeing how things go. First things first though, let's take a look at uh, what Mono is in practical terms. When we install Delphi Prism, uh, Delphi Prism is installed into the Visual Studio environment, but Prism also installs a copy of Novell's Mono platform. Here we see that version 2.4 of Mono has been installed into the program files uh, directory tree and all the relevant binaries and libraries uh, can be found here. So for example we've got all the various tools including the primary tool which invokes Mono applications which is mono.exe and we've also got a whole bunch of libraries um, including our old friend the global assembly cache that we may be familiar with from .NET development. We also get additional uh, libraries installed, but we won't worry too much about those at this point. Let's uh, keep things nice and simple. Okay, let's build a console application to start with and see how we get on running it under .NET and also under Mono on various platforms. So we'll start by choosing a new project. Um, we'll um, ignore the basic Delphi Prism project templates which are primarily targeting the .NET platform and instead we'll look specifically at the Mono targets. Um, there's a variety of targets here. Uh, we'll stick with a console application. Create that and we'll see that it looks kind of like a regular .NET Prism console application because it is a regular .NET Prism console application. Um, the prime difference here is in the project file where this particular application is linked against the mono assemblies rather than the .NET assemblies. But other than that, it's exactly the same. In fact, it builds exactly the same um, binary file that you would do if you were building a regular .NET console application. Let's break with tradition here and get rid of the standard hello world greeting and add in a little bit of code which analyzes our surroundings. Uh, the first statement writes out some information telling us what our platform or operating system is and the second statement um, checks whether we're running under mono or .NET and displays that information. The idea being that under mono there will always be the mono.runtime type available. We'll build this. And given a successful build, we'll launch a command prompt, Visual Studio 2008 command prompt, and we'll go into the appropriate directory, find the executable, and simply run it. And unsurprisingly, it tells me that I'm running under Windows and I'm running under .NET because I've just launched a .NET application. Still, let's see what happens under a different scenario. Let's launch a different command prompt this time. We'll go for the mono command prompt, which simply sets up a path to the mono bin directory. Again, I'm going to go to the pertinent directory. And this time I'm going to launch the program via the mono command. This time it tells us that we're running under the mono runtime. So we can see that the same executable running on Windows can be run either under .NET or under mono. Now let's check what happens under a different operating system. This is Linux. Uh, we have the same um, project sitting in oops, sitting in the appropriate directory uh, console application one.exe this is a directory mapped onto where Visual Studio generated the executable um, if I run the 
the executable via mono. This time it tells us again we're running under the mono runtime, but this time we're running under a variant of Unix. So the platform identifier in the base class library will return Unix when running under Linux. Let's see what happens if we try this on the Mac. Here is a Mac command prompt. And again, I'm going to have to go to the relevant directory. which is here. Uh, again, the same executable, the same mapping to the same directory. Run the application. Again, it says we're running under mono, but with OS X, um, the mono framework still reports Unix as the platform we're running under. But nevertheless, um, we do have um, an application successfully running under three different operating systems. You may decide that being forced to run your application via the mono command is undesirable. Certainly there are many tools that come with the mono runtime itself, pretty much all of which are mono executables, which don't need to be run explicitly via the mono command. Instead they have scripts, the equivalent of Windows batch files or command scripts, um, to do that for you. We can build a script ourselves if we wish to. Um, let's build a script for this console application. I'll edit the script in the Vi editor and uh, we'll call the script console app. Okay, here we have the Vi editor. Go into insert mode. First thing we need is the um, script header. And then we need to invoke mono and console application one.exe. And then we can write this out. And we should now have a script file, a small script file. Um, however, the script file um, does not have, when you look at the long list format, doesn't have any execute bits against it. There are no X's. Uh, and as a consequence, it won't be directly runnable. So before we can run it, we need to ensure that we have given the execute bit. We can change the mode, add in the X for console app. And now if we have a look at it, we do have uh, X's, meaning it's an executable. So we should now be able to invoke it. To invoke it, we can't just type its name um, because the current directory is not actually on the search path in Unix-based systems by default for security reasons. So instead, we'll say current directory, console app, and that now runs the application successfully. So there we have what is now a regular looking um, application running on OS X although in actual fact it's a mono application, a managed application. Mono and .NET are both implementations of a standard. The standard defines the behavior of the runtime, defines exception handling, um, just-in-time compilation, all that sort of stuff. It also defines a portion of the .NET framework library called the base class library. .NET is a massive superset of this, but the standard only defines a subset. Mono also implements this subset, but also, uh, over and above that, tries to mimic the entirety, or as much as is feasible, of the .NET class library system. Consequently, uh, there's a reasonable chance that most of the code that you try and um, port over to Mono uh, stands a good chance of working. There is a tool called the Mono Migration Analyzer, which does allow you to check to see whether there are any APIs in the class library that you're calling which are known to not exist under Mono. But as it stands, we do have an application that does run across three completely separate operating systems.